Hello, everybody. At least you can hear me. I'm pretty sure that you can hear me. So let's start. We have 45 minutes and, and I have some other presentations still to do. Not to present, do before my other slot is, is starting. So, so I have to have 45 minutes only with this group. Smart identity pro uh, protection that works for you and your users, the customers, the end users. That is the topic for, for this time and, and today. So let's continue with, with this agenda. First of all, I would like to calibrate a little bit uh, what I mean by, by protecting the identity and what Symantec sees as, as a way to actually safeguard the, the identities and well, how the business is changed over the few last few years. And, and then we will have a little bit more technical details how our validation ID protection service is actually working. So let's continue with the calibration. Nothing has changed on the security for the last 15 years, what comes to basics in, in, in my lifetime, at least 15 years of doing security. Uh, the CIA, uh, CIA principles are the same. But this one thing which is even more, I, I used to work for, before joining Symantec, I was working for Microsoft and before that I was actually working, I was working as a CISO for NAG company. So, so there was one thing which was actually more important than security principles and that was usability. Because if you are really good at security and you use and do, do a solution which is not usable, it's game over, you, you are done. If, if the users just hate the system because of the security things, it's 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 useless system. But the principles are that you, you just have to have really good availability, right information, right system, to right people at right time. This is one of the fundamentals. Then there's a integrity. Sometimes you need to have encryption. For example, we have an encryption talk later this day. So that's more, more likely something, something that you want to have when you, for example, are using passwords. Then confidentiality is, is something that, that you also want to have. And well, actually the integrity is, is digital signing and confidentiality is, is, is the encryption part. I made the change last night with the, with the slides and, and the places of the words. So this is the CIA uh, triad. Let's see a real example in real life. Bus emergency exit in, in London. There's a window, actually a door, and it says that this is the emergency exit, right? Then there's lots of other signs. When there's an e uh, emergency, I hope that I don't need the Wi-Fi access, for example, or I, I really don't mind using the, the seat belt at that time. Then it continues that you have to open the lift, uh, you have to lift the yellow cover and then there and the uh, handle to be able to use the emergency exit. At, and then finally you will find the yellow box and the handle itself. Do you think that you have time to actually read all these instructions if you want to use the emergency exit? At least I'm, I'm, I, I, I assume that I would not read the instructions at all. Yes, last night in my hotel room when I was checking in, the first thing I usually ask, not about the breakfast, I'm a big guy, I can survive, but the internet access. Okay, we have internet access. Here's the code. Nice. My iP iPad was in, in using, using uh, the internet access right away when I was, I was able to log in. Only one flaw. Who can spot the flaw? It is not encrypted at all. It's HTTP connection, so if somebody actually wants to steal the credentials that I have here, I'm done. Okay, that's an that's internal IP address as well. It doesn't matter, but, but the basics are that we have really weird and, and, and pretty strong at, at least eight characters uh, with capitals and, 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 and even numbers, the password. Maybe it's changing. This is, for me, this is 
overkill. I'm just an internet user in a hotel room. Come on. The password might be a password. It's good enough. Or password four. That, that's good enough. Or my first name when, I, when I'm uh, checking in, whatever. So these are, these are just uh, simple examples that, that sometimes you have total overkill to some places where you just don't need uh, protection or that much protection. And also the usability is sometimes, well, not on the uh, uh, same level that it should be. Basically, we have users and devices, and we want to use some type of resources like websites, shares, applications, processes. And what we have to do in, in this process, we have to identify the user or the device. Well, this is a, usually public information. Guest 4 was the public information for my internet login. Authentication, that was the password. Maybe it's the same one for the next 12 months, maybe two years, maybe 10 years, I don't know. So how can I prove that I am who I, I said that I am? Then there's an authorization part. These can be mixed up, the authentication authorization in some places, but, but basically that's what you can actually do. Based on, for example, AD groups, you are part of some group, therefore you can use some, some resources. And then there's access control making sure that, well, you don't access the, the uh, resource without, without proper uh, right to do that. What has changed in the past five years or so? People are always on. How many has a smartphone in this crowd? How many of you have, have, have two smartphones? I do. How, why? That's a question. Uh, how, how many of you have a tablet? Any kind of tablet? PC? How many are you, you, uh, of you are, are now logged to Twitter or, or, or tweeting or, or using Facebook or somehow connecting to the internet? Mm, pretty many. People are always on. I'm not using Facebook, so don't don't try to find me there. But I have lots of devices. This is my own device. This is the company phone. I want to keep them separated, so that's my way to do this. And, and this comes also to the customers. They, they are using different devices. Just think about how many different usernames you have. There must be tens of different usernames. Or then you are using just one, your email account, to whatever you like. Maybe that's a company email. Are you sure that you are not leaving the company, that you are now working? Never? Working there forever? People are smiling, you don't see that. You just, somebody are, some of you are smiling. But, but we just don't have a uh, silver bullet to, to, to make the passwords, for example, disappear. We, we, we just cannot do that. So there's some separation, and there will be some separation in the, in, the, in the future as well. But it's important that we have the identity, identity of the devices that we are using, or different type of, of user identities. And then when we are speaking about the strong authentication, uh, the principle for, for strong authentication is that you know something, you have something, you are something. How many of you can change your biometric password? I have five here, five here. I cannot change them. At least, well, okay, maybe a few times if I use acid or something. But maybe, maybe just once. These are public information for me. This is actually the identity part of the authentication. If I use biometrics, my password is usually a PIN code or something. Okay, that's given. We have validation and ID protection service. It's a weird name, but it's good for you to know that we, it was called uh, VeriSign ID protection service, VIP. So when we acquired VeriSign, we wanted to change the name without changing the acronym. 
So now it's validation and ID protection. Same acronym, VIP. So let's see how the, the VIP service works. And it's, uh, it's authentication as a service. Actually, it's been running in the last 15 years, and, and the biggest customers are PayPal, eBay. Pretty big customer for us. And, and, and the SLA or, or the uptime for this service for the last five years has been 100%. So it's been always on. Always. So this strong authentication part is, is, is running on our uh, hosted service. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that some of you have, have, for example, used RSA Secure ID or ACE server. At least I have worked in companies where there has been one really critical server, ACE authentication server, in the data center. Nobody knows even the, the host name of that box but it's running there. Nobody wants to touch it. Nobody wants to update it. Nobody wants to change anything because so many different things are somehow related to that box and the authentication, what is running with, with it. So uh, the VIP is a service. We update it when it, it, it needs to be updated. And, and as I said, the SLA is, is pretty high. You can have one-time passwords, for example, I'm using at the moment, I actually actually have many different tokens. So I have the hardware token. This is a key ring. Then I have the mobile do token as well. Actually, my both phones has, has a token. So this is an app for my, my mobile. And of course, so that you can actually see something back there, I just have a bigger token for you guys. So it's an it's a application, and one-time password is provided uh, with, with that application. We also have out-of-band type of authentication for, for strong authentication, so that you can use your username, password, and then provide this uh, one-time password, maybe from the, the app, or maybe via SMS or, or other ways if you are not using mobile token or, or software token. And, and last night when I was, I was checking my VIP management account, I, I realized that it, it has been expired. So I'm unable to log in anymore. So, so this is the screenshot, but it's not that, technically that, that's not, not so interesting because that's just a website where you actually have the credentials because each and every, every uh, strong authentication uh, token, whatever it's a, it's a mobile app or, or uh, hardware token, there's an ID. So basically you see those IDs there and, and the credentials or the users, usernames, uh, user credentials, and you combine those two things. There's lots of uh, things that you can do with the self-service so that when people are, for example, uh, logging to VPN, the first time that they are using the VIP strong authentication, they can actually enroll themselves and provide the ID from the phone by themselves as a self-service. So I will, I will actually show you that in, in, in real life with, with a uh, couple of examples. So there's the different type of, of authentication methods, as I mentioned. So, so we have uh, one-time password credentials, hardware tokens, mobile tokens, uh, uh, even desktop clients. So for example, if I just take VIP software here, actually this is basically the same information that you can have with the app that you install to your phone. We support over 900 different models and, and makers. So, so whatever smartphone, for example, you have at the moment, just search VIP access, and you will find the, the free app, and you can download it and install it right away. If you have, for example, eBay user account, you can actually have that VIP uh, right now integrated or, or enrolled to your PayPal account. So then you will have strong, strong authentication for your PayPal or, or eBay account. We still support the outbound, uh, out-of-band uh, um, 
authentication made itself well, so, so that's SMS, uh, text messages, uh, even voice call or email. Sometimes those are uh, like a backup solutions if somehow these tokens are not working. You remember the user, computer, and, and the resource picture. What we can actually provide or what we provide with, with this service as well is a risk-based assessment as well. So when user comes to a portal, for example, you have an uh, extranet portal for, for partners, for example. Uh, you can provide the login page for them, and in front of that login page, when they are just about to log in, you, you can have our risk-based assessment so that we can check where that connection is coming, what type of uh, usernames or credentials the user is, is uh, using on what type of, of device, and we can have a, have a risk assessment based on, on that. If, if that connection is coming from really, really bad botnet, for example, maybe it's, it's a good idea to, to just block that in, uh, connection to, to the, your login page at, uh, in the first place. Why on earth should anybody log to your system from a botnet? So we can have that uh, risk-based uh, assessment before the user is actually authenticating. And then after you have uh, given your, your username and password, then we might ask your strong authentication uh, with VIP. These type of devices are, are something that you can use, hardware tokens, uh, there's lots of different form factions supported, Intel chips as well. Uh, most likely nowadays the smartphone token which is free is easy to install. Uh, it's a self-service type of application so people just have to install it. And then there's the, the blue ID on, on each and every token which is unique and then the, the yellow code which is valid for uh, half, half a minute. That's pretty easy to install, pretty easy to, to actually set up. So let's see how it works in, in real life. That's eBay example for me. Actually, I have my, my own Windows phone because this is my, my personal account, so I don't want to. Of course, you can combine. I, I could easily use the same token for different Places, but I'm a security geek, so don't believe that I want to share everything with my company. So this is my, my own, own credential that I have, and this is the VIP that I have for my own purposes. So this is really personal thing for me. No, that's not the correct password. Let's hope that this was the right one. Yes, I remember that one. My password is pretty strong, actually, and I change it all the time, each day, right? Maybe it's the same one that I use in many places, but because of the strong authentication, I really don't care, because you cannot go there if you don't have my mobile, which actually has also a PIN code, so you have to have lots of things, and this is a strong authentication multi-level type of, of approach. And then I will provide the number and you can see that it's valid for 22 seconds. So if you know my ID, my password, uh, you have 20 to 15 seconds anymore. There we go. So now I know that my eBay account, everything which is, which is going on on eBay is pretty safe with this strong authentication. This is actually protecting my identity online. And, and this type of, of integration you can do with, with different, different uh, systems as well. So this can be consumer type of, of, of businesses. It, it, it might be an enterprise solution that you are actually protecting. So if you're not running eBay, this is the setup usually. You have an enterprise uh, network which is um, below here. Uh, you have only one 
server, which is provided by us. It's, it's called the VIP Enterprise Gateway. And, and that's basically just uh, connecting your AD or LDAP uh, and the user base to our cloud service, nothing else. It, there's no active parts in, in, in that way on, on that box. It just connects your infrastructure to our cloud service. So when the v, uh, VIP user, the normal domain user, for example, is using, let's say, SSL VPN, then there's a VPN solution. We have different vendors supported. We have lots of plugins, for example, for, for different VPN solutions. If, if that supports radius, for example, well, you, you can pretty much hook up any, 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 any system to, to that uh, VIP solution then. When the, the user credentials are correct, then we, we go to our backend and check if, if the one-time password is correct. And, and it, it's, it's just using a web services SOAP protocol and, and web services behind the, the scenes. And if that's good, we, we actually give the user right to use the system. And we can actually do that as well because we are semantic. We are using that for our own SSL. So let's take that one here. So that's our SSL VPN. Of course, I want to use the privacy SSL profile. Once again, security professional, so I don't trust anybody. And this is really, really uh, sensitive as well, so you don't know my email address at all. Maybe this, oh, not the same password, right? Nobody uses the same password. And then I will take my corporate phone and then provide the ID. This is just to make it a little bit faster so that I can provide the password and, and VIP number, the one-time password with, the, with my own uh, AD username and password. Actually, you can do the same with eBay as well, but there's a different approach is yeah, what is easier and what is the most user friendly, friendly. So it says that, okay, the authentication part is actually, actually working already and the SSL uh, VPN is launching itself and voila, I mean, to, to be able to use our VPN, you need my phone, my username, my password, the VPN profile, and so on. So this is the this is not nothing nothing too fancy. The the key thing here is that the strong authentication part is actually working as a service, and and therefore it, it's it's uh, most likely up to date. And we have the risk of a risk assessment on on the on the same service service as well. So it is not, not just the authentication. Do we have any questions now? Now it will be perfect time to actually have questions. I will wait. We have 20 minutes. Everything, I must be good because no, no questions at all. We have some one one semantic guy here. No, no questions from from our side at all. You can you can have the integration. So these plugins, for example, for for SSL VPN, they just help you to integrate the the, the authentication flow so that the the VPN concentrator, for example, is able to speak with the gateway or sometimes speak to our cloud service directly. So you can you can have different different uh, uh, setups with with the VP, VPI as as well. There's a Citrix, Cisco, Juniper, uh, to make a f uh, name few. Of course, Microsoft solutions, UAG, and those type of services which are using Radius, they are supported as well. It's a pretty long list that we have on on our website.
Then when we are speaking about protecting the, the identities, we also have one other solution which is called O3. And, and this is pretty a new product or solution. Uh, just a little bit over one year we have had this, this solution. And O3 is, is a solution gateway which is also running as a service. So, so that's a cloud service for cloud service. So, so basically what, what it does, it provides a single sign-on and identity-based access to different cloud services or web services. If you think about, for example, you have uh, Google Apps, for example, you're using uh, Office 365, you might have different Salesforce or whatever different type of cloud services. You might end up in this situation like I did when I joined Symantec. This is actually my, my reality when I, when I joined the company. And I have said that, okay, maybe we made this for ourselves. So we are using heavily lots of different uh, uh, cloud services. So the, these, all, all of these systems are not any, any, any of these services uh, is, is, is running our, our uh, own data center. These are cloud services, most likely, each and every one of these. And I have different usernames and I have different uh, passwords as well. So what the O3 actually does, I want to have the, I have to log out from the VPN. So let's sign out there. So now I'm using the wireless access here because the authentication is different when I'm using VPN type of access and when I'm using the wireless access. That's the reason I wanted to uh, sign out from the VPN. So let's go to our production, our internal production O3 gateway. So first of all, you, you will see that, uh, that there's a SSL SSL certificate to that portal. The login uh, URL is, is, is login 3 symantecom And actually it's, it provides a different, different um, portal to different devices. So if I'm using, for example, iPad, I will have a different uh, portal, different type of portal uh, than I have here with the browser. I use my AD credentials. So the no, I know that the, the confidentiality is, is, is done by SSL, so this is covered. I can use my, my, my username and password securely. And now it is authenticating me to our O3 portal. There's a different applications uh, based on where I can, come, which device I'm using. At the moment, in this place, using this wi uh, wireless network, this device today, only three applications show up here. I know that this Workday solution or application is, is, is HR solution. So if I fire up that one, what happens? It actually, actually gives me VIP access required and a secure security code. So you might guess that I have to provide the one-time password from my phone. And then I will be able to, to log in. But also, this is the place where when I said that user can, user can kind of, if, I, if this is the first time that I'm using actually the VIP, there's a place that I can register my, my credentials or if I have lost, for example, the, the mobile. Let's say that somebody has stolen my, my iPhone. I can revoke my, my VIP token, but at, at some point I have to also re-enrollment, do the enrollment uh, again. Maybe I want to use a different type of token. So I can use, do those things by myself 
from, from this uh, uh, self-service portal as well. So let's see if I can actually change. This is scary. I, I was not planning to do it, but let's do change from my iPhone to this Windows phone token. That's cool and not planned. Let's see how it goes. Wrong browser, not responding. Okay. Nothing to do with the ser service itself. My browser is just dying. My lucky day. And actually, you can see here that, that it is using verisign.com. So those of you who didn't realize that we acquired the Verisign a couple of years ago, yes, we did. So we, we have the certificate and identity business, and we are implementing those, those in, in different solutions that we have or had before. So this is my credential ID from, from my phone, and I here I guess you actually see that this is mobile token, software token. So if I want to change this to, to uh, another one, I provide the one-time password and then continue. And it will ask actually, what is your next token that you will use? And also ask the, the one-time password for, for this, this new token as well. So it's pretty simple and, and straightforward process and, and lots of these things can be done as a self-service. Nothing too fancy, but remember you don't have to run anything on your own data center for this authentication. Everything is provided by the service itself. The, the self-enrollment uh, uh, portals and lots of those, those uh, additional uh, logins or plugins are also provided by us. So this is easy, easy to set up, and some of our partners are, have been able to, to uh, set up the, the system in a couple hours even. So it's, it's nothing too fancy. Let's see if the, well. My browser died on, on behind the scenes, so I lost the connection. So let's hope that I, I, I'm still able to, to log in. Let's try that one. And if I was able to, to change the token, then I will provide the new number. This is the one-time one password, and I should be able to log in with that new uh, token and, and number. So pretty straightforward thing. Uh, the other ap application that uh, actually I launched was this one. So, so actually when I provided the 80 user account just once, I have not typed the, the username twice, only once. I have used uh, the one-time password for different applications here, but I only used my AD credentials once. So this is the single sign-on feature of, 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 of the O3 service. So this is one of the services, and yeah, I can see that it has authenticated me, me as a Petri Alanala, so that's good. It's, it's working behind the scenes. Next time, I, I promise that I will use another browser, not my Internet Explorer. But as, as an ex-Microsoft guy, I just have a, have a habit to use it. So forgive me about that one. So
So let's recap. 15 years, the service itself has been pretty solid. Lots of customers, you can already use it. And, and I will share the instructions, for example, how to use that with your own uh, eBay account. So you can set up and test this free of charge right away. Start using it right away. There's a trial as well available. So when you enroll, I was doing that yesterday night when, when I realized that my manager is, is expired. So, so the test trial is, is for, for a couple of months. So that was expired and I was trying to enroll a new one. So it takes a couple of days, one or two days, depending uh, uh, what, which, which day you are actually, actually trying to, to set up the trial. But once you get that, there's a portal. Everything is on that portal. So the gateway image is there or the software for the gateway uh, to connect your own infrastructure to our, our um, cloud service. So that's there. The, all the manuals are there as well. All the plugins, all the, all the uh, manuals for the plugin setups, everything is on that portal. So that's trial uh, that you can actually, actually test as well and, and, and try that uh, in your own organization. We have few customers, as you can see. Some are bigger, some are smaller. But lots of, lots of bank customers, as well as insurance companies, post uh, uh, offices around the world. So we have few. This is just a bunch of those, those companies. Any more questions? If, if you have, there's my email. You can also, the next 15 minutes, you can, you can find me here. But after that, I'm gone. So we will have another presentation by Symantec and, and and, and Mr. Suistola, and then I will have the one hour and, and 32 minutes uh, around endpoint security and, and encryption. So, thank you.